In this video, I will be building an ozone generator to produce ozone for a future project. Ozone is an allotrope of oxygen and can be produced from pure oxygen or the oxygen in ambient air. It is a toxic gas and should not be produced in enclosed areas. Since ozone cannot be easily stored for longer periods of time, it must be produced when needed. There are different methods for producing ozone. The one I will be using is the coronal discharge method. If you have ever noticed the smell of an electric arc, you have probably noticed the smell of ozone. So we could theoretically use a simple arc to produce ozone, but it wouldn't be very efficient. The best way is to produce a corona discharge over a larger surface area. You can simply buy an ozone generator that does this job for you for relatively little money. So we have two options either buy an ozone generator or build one ourselves for at least twice the cost. I think the decision is clear. I 3D printed these two parts here. Their main function is to hold uh, two tubes. Um, of course, I will shorten these tubes. And to generate ozone from oxygen, you basically need a continuous um, corona discharge. And to achieve this corona discharge, I'm going to use a glass tube. And inside this glass tube, there is a metal mesh. It's just a piece that I cut out from yeah, this metal wire mesh. It's stainless steel. It's made to protect you from flies and other insects. And one um, part of this wire mesh goes inside the glass tube and the other one goes around the glass tube. And when I apply a high voltage, high frequency um, at these two metal meshes, I will get a corona discharge across this tube. The PLA I use to print these parts is not resistant to ozone, at least not for long periods of time. As only the ends here are exposed to the ozone, I will try and see how it works and if it doesn't um, hold up, I will print them out of PETG. The best would be a polymer like Peak, but Peak is, I think, I don't know the exact price, but it's very expensive. So I will try to use PLA and see how it, um, yeah, how it does. And if it degrades too much, I, I will change it. There's no, it's no problem to just uh, switch these pieces. As a power supply, you could use a zero volt switching supply in combination with a flyback transformer, or you could maybe um, use a neon sign transformer. I just bought this old used uh, power supply for an ozone generator from eBay for three bucks. It was really cheap. And I'm going to use this one because it's easy. We have now connected the power supply to the mesh on the outside of the inner glass tube and to the mesh on the inside. And what we are going to do now is to attach the outer tube that goes around the inner tube. And what happens is here at this inlet, oxygen is going to flow in this area. So outside of the inner tube, but inside of the outer tube. And due to the corona discharge, um, the oxygen will be converted to ozone. And we have a second end cap on the other side, just like this. And then the oxygen will enter here on this side, flow through the ozone generator and exit this side and I made the hole for the entrance of the oxygen on the top and the hole for the exit of the ozone at the bottom so that the oxygen will hopefully um, not only just flow on the top or the bottom but will be forced to flow um, around the whole inner tube. If we now connect the power supply we should see a nice corona discharge. Not sure yet. Okay. 
this power supply is definitely shot. It even vaporized some of the trails on the PCB. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was the bad quality or maybe I um, was um, putting too much current. But I already got a new one. Sorry for the different environment, but my workbench is currently occupied by another cesium project. So I had to move to my desk. This is the new power supply. It's an HVGen 10AC version 3.1. And yeah, by now the project is definitely way more expensive than just buying an ozone generator, but that's not the point. And as you can see, when I connect it to my power supply and raise the voltage, you will see a corona discharge um, occur in this tube. I'm now going to connect the power supply. As you can see, not much is happening. Let me raise the voltage slowly. We are currently at 13 volts on the input side of the power supply. And you can see on the ends of the tube, you can see the first corona discharge starting. It's at 17 volts. And when I rise, the voltage even more. We are now at 24 volts. You can see a nice glow inside the tube, which is the corona discharge. The goal is to fit these three components inside this housing. This will be the housing for my um, ozone generator. This is the high voltage power supply, the discharge tube, and also the power supply for my high voltage power supply. This is the plan. I want to fit it in there something like this. The tube is still crooked because I have to grind down the post so it will fit correctly. And I can connect these transistors on this side to the aluminum plate here so it will act kind of like a heatsink. I hope I don't have issues with overheating. I will test it and if there's an issue with overheating I might have to add a fan or some venting holes. And the oxygen input will be on this side and the output uh, of the oxygen ozone mixture on the other side. Yeah, let's get to work. I wanted to use the time to thank my Patreons, White Quark, Malte and Michael. I'm overwhelmed that there are three people that chose to support me. I'm really thankful and hope you like the videos that are coming. Before I show you the final ozone generator, a word of caution. I am not an electrician, so I have no professional experience with electronics or high voltage. That means that you shouldn't take anything in this video as advice or instructions to build your own ozone generator. If you want to do it yourself, get into contact with somebody who knows exactly what they're doing. Everything I did, I did because it would, I thought it would be reasonably safe and should work. Now to the insides. This is the ozone generator from the inside. There are three main components. Um, the Obviously the corona discharge tube here, made out of these two borosilicate glass tubes. And the electrodes on the inside and the outside of the inner glass tube. We've got our high voltage power supply and our 24 volts 3 amps power supply that supplies power to our high voltage supply. The main plate here on the front I've used as a heatsink to um, get heat from these transistors away. These transistors are at different potentials so they have to be connected, they have to be electrically isolated from this plate or they will short. I can show it to you. So these um, thermal pads are non-conductive and also these screws have um, plastic washers and plastic sleeves so they won't um, conduct electricity. I, I've added a ground to everything here. These two um, plates are grounded as you can see here and here. I've also connected a ground to the um, low voltage power supply. 
there was no ground connected. It was a cheap one, but there was a cutoff ground wire that I reconnected to the ground from the cable. I've grounded the high voltage power supply and of course one of the electrodes is ground. As you can see, there's not much going on at the back or the front. There is this switch, which switches on the low voltage power supply to um, power on the high voltage power supply. And we've got a hole where we can connect a tube to the discharge tube. The same on the front, there's just a hole where I can connect my tube. In the future, I will definitely test this generator to see how much ozone it produces. I will use a titration method to determine how much grams of ozone this one produces depending on the flow of my oxygen concentrator and maybe I will test it with ambient air too. I've closed the blinds so you can see the corona discharge better. And as you might notice, I have changed um, the grids inside so the corona discharge is more evenly around the glass tube. I just tightened the electrodes on the outside and pushed them on the inside so they fit better and there are no air gaps and that way the corona discharge is very even and the ozone production will be more efficient. I am sorry for the bad audio quality and my bad English in some parts of the video. I hope that you enjoyed the video anyways. Thank you a lot for watching.